Hola, cage fighting connoisseurs. This is Kid Nate of BloodyElbow.com, and I've got the privilege today of being joined by UFC lightweight John McDessey. He's going to be fighting Sam Stout at UFC uh, 154 coming up this Saturday. John, welcome to the show. Thanks for joining us. Oh, thank you for having me. So what's it like on fight week? You've got just a few days before the fights. Have you scaled back your training? I mean, what's your schedule like during this final week uh, before the fight? Yeah, I, I just finished a, a hard training session this morning with my uh, Angelo kickboxing coach, uh, Angelo Debella. And uh, I mean, training is all, um, I turn up to the fight, you know, I'm cutting weight. Uh, I'm uh, pretty much on a strict diet. I've been, uh, and you know, it just like every other fight, just, you know, train hard and, and stay focused. So the rest of this week, you won't have any more hard training sessions or? I mean, no, I, I'm still training intense, but they're just shorter, mostly technique, and uh, obviously no more sparring. That's why I, I, my last sparring was last weekend. And how are you feeling going into the fight? Uh, you know what? Uh, I, feel, I feel good. You know, it's, it's a scary part. Uh, I never felt this good before. Uh, I can't ask for a better team. I have a great team. Uh, you know, FDF, Fear of Fighters, is 100% behind me. I got, uh, you know, obviously, you know, uh, I... TriStar Gym is a, a lot of great sparring partners. I mean, I can't ask for a better team. I have a, this training camp was, uh, was, a, was a very good training camp for me. And, uh, you know, martial arts, if I, for me, it's like, you know, it's, for a, it's, like, it's, it's like a journey, you know. It teaches you a lot, you know. And uh, I've been doing martial arts since the age of six. And I, I went through many different coaches, different disciplines. And, you know, I can't ask for... Uh, for a better life, you know, it's, you have, you're obviously going to have you know, up and downs, but it's, it's, it's a struggle, and uh, I think that's what makes you, what, what really uh, makes you stronger as a person. So you mentioned your martial arts background. You started out in Taekwondo at a pretty young age. How young did you start with Taekwondo training? Yeah, well, I mean, you know, I, I was I was like a hardhead. I was the, the, the middle child, and, uh, you know, very simple. My mother told my older brother to take me to one of the Taekwondo practices, and uh, the first class I went into practice, um, I fell in love with my coach, and the, the, I love I, I fell in love with fighting and the martial art, and uh, and just ever since then, six, second week of just training, I, I started competing. You know, I, I was competing almost every second week. You know, in taekwondo and taekwondo is it's a it's a, it's a well respected sport. It's a, you know it's a lot of it's, it's a good great sport for for you know I, you know I, I would recommend it for anybody that uh, you know for kids who want you know to teach them discipline and. And just to you know, it's a great way to it's a great way to express yourself, and uh, it, it's you know, it's it's a fun sport, you know. And so then, after Taekwondo, you switched to Shotokan Karate. How long? Well, I mean, yeah. Go ahead. And yeah, tell, first. Tell yeah, I mean, well, uh, what happened was uh, very simple. Uh, you know, I, I was uh, I was really I was doing very well in Taekwondo, winning high level competitions. I I was second place in, in Canada. <clears throat> I won a gold Olympic juniors. You know. Uh, I was doing very well in Taekwondo. I have many trophies and gold medals. And uh, and then after, basically, my coach had to quit. Uh, he had to stop. Uh, the gym had went down, basically, for, for financial reasons. Uh, and then after that, a few years later, um, uh, keep in mind that for me, for me, it was just not about training. And just I, I won't go to any gym, you know. For me, having a coach, with, you know, for me, it's all about chemistry also. You know, it's not just to go and train. Physically and emotionally, it means a lot to me. So uh, that being said, uh, I... Uh, I, uh, you know, I uh, stopped, stopped martial arts for a couple of years. I w when I was in high school, I had played soccer and so forth. So for a couple of years, I didn't really, uh, didn't, I wasn't in any gym. And then uh, I, I was itching inside, you know, I wanted to do something and I wanted to join something. And I was watching K1 at that time. Kickboxing was, I caught my eyes. When I was 17 years old, I found the closest dojo. Basically, and uh, I went into a dojo, and uh, you know, me and me and my coach uh, at that time, Walter Barrick, he was a karate champion. He was a high high level karate guy, and he also did kickboxing. So obviously, uh, he was a karate school, you know. So there wasn't really a kickboxing people there. I was the only kickboxing. Uh, I was pretty much the only kickboxing uh, student. So I would do the karate classes, then I would stay there for an extra couple hours and train my other stuff, you know. And uh, I competed in karate a little bit for fun. You know, I mean, I, I did well, but uh, I didn't like the, the whole uh, point sparring, you know, the whole uh, you hit one point and then you stop. So uh, I wanted to do something continuous. So I joined the kickboxing league in, in Quebec and I started fighting kickboxing did very well. I was doing very good in the circuit. And uh, and then after that, um, he uh, pretty much, I had no training partners. I had nobody to challenge me and, uh, and I had to find another gym. 
So I went to another. I found another coach. Two years I was. I found out 2006. I uh, I went to. Uh, I won the USKBA. It's a United States Kickboxing Association organization. I fought twice in one day. I, I won the gold. I was doing, I was under Danny Dicotto, another another kick. I, I true, this guy was a real kickboxer, you know. So I went to train under him for two years. He was uh, a, a great, taught me a lot, you know. And uh, and then after that, uh, kickboxing was dying out basically. And then 2000, if I'm not mistaken, in the 2007, around there, I I I joined TriStar Gym and I focused strictly for MMA. Uh, and that's when I uh, I, I was watching Pride and. You know, Mikko Krokop was a big inspiration for me because uh, he was a K1 fighter, and I watched his fight fighting days, and and really got me motivated to to try it out, and then everything else is history. For a guy with a Taekwondo background, you've shown some pretty good punching in your fights. Where did have you trained straight boxing, or is all your punching coming from kickboxing training? What what have you done to to build the the fisticuffs into your into your arsenal? <laughs> Well, the thing, the funny part is that yeah, everybody thinks I'm my, you know, taekwondo background, but I, I haven't trained taekwondo in so many years. Uh, last time I trained taekwondo, yeah, like it was a long time ago. You know, it just the the, the thing is the the kicks, it's it's it comes unnatural uh, because uh, obviously there's not one art that has kicks. Every art has kicks. It just depends on the style. You know, like because of my taekwondo, karate, kickboxing, and and obviously you know, I mean. All, Putting them all together, it, it just you know it looks like uh, it looks like it's one art, but really I train everything. I train my boxing. I train my my, my I, I, I practice in Muay Thai. I practice in wrestling. I practice in grappling. Like I don't just I'm not one uh, you know one dimension fighter. I, I practice all aspects of the game. You know in MMA and uh, and unfortunately uh, you know obviously I didn't I believe I still didn't hit my full potential. You know. What are you looking for from Sam Stout on Saturday? What, what's the most dangerous thing you think he brings to the fight? Every fighter for me, you know, I don't understand any opponent. And the Sam Stout is a, is, a, is a tough fighter, very dangerous, and I'm gonna put his name to the test. You know, when it comes November 17th, and uh, I, you know what? Uh, for me, I'm just, at the end of the day before, you know, I felt I felt that the pressure got too much into my head. You know, in my last couple of fights. Uh, Regardless, you know, the win or the wins or losses, it's just you know, at the end of the day, you start, you know, when, you, when you're committed to something so much, you, you know, your head plays with you. And uh, I realized that, uh, you know, I had to take a step back and start doing it. You know, I started to not really enjoy what I was doing. You know, and uh, working with a mental condition coach, uh, Brian King, uh, great guy, helped me a lot to, you know, to really focus on the process. Uh, you know, really focus on 20 feet at a time, not overthink things and just try to go out there and have fun regardless of win or lose just uh, my goal is to go out there and perform and I know that I still didn't that's what my goal is November 17th to go out there and, and do what I what I believe that my skills that nobody has you know I believe that I believe in my skills and I believe that I still didn't show showcase all my skills in the cage so you you weren't able to make weight for your last fight against Anthony Andrew Connie. What are you doing different in your weight cutting regime? What happened last time, and and what do you, what steps have you taken to adjust and correct that problem? Yeah, well, you know, uh, people don't know. You know, people just see the fight night. You know, uh, it, it was a my first loss. You know, it, obviously, it was very tough for me. You know, I, and uh, you know, I just pretty much rogue. You know, I just changed my whole training camp, changed my whole training regimen. I uh, I was listening to people that I shouldn't have listened to. Uh, I was doing too much of bodybuilding, eating uh, red meat. Uh, I was I was lifting weights right up to my fight. Uh, I wasn't hydrated enough. You know, it, it was a really bad weight cut. I didn't I did everything wrong. And uh, you know, I was in the sauna. I was gonna kill. Uh, mentally, I'm, I was trained hard, so I was in the sauna ready to die, basically. You know, simply just to make that weight. And uh, the doctor told me to stop. It wasn't you know if you he told me if you want to fight the next day, you, you, you don't risk the, don't try to lose your last two pounds. And put it this way, I was in the sauna for over 20 minutes and. Not even one drop of sweat was coming up. I was I was so depleted that uh, my body had nothing left to cut. To cut. It was a bad uh, bad time for me. And so you've adjusted adjusted your diet and have you cut out the, yeah, the yeah. weightlifting? Yeah, oh yeah, I, I, I like I said, I uh, you know like like I said, the beauty, the beautiful part about fighting it's it's you have to find what works for you, you know. And, and I found I believe that uh, this time around I'm, I'm working with. Good guys that actually care about me and uh, uh, my strange conditioning coach and uh, my wrestling coach and all, so forth. Uh, you know, and plus I, I found a guy who's helping with my diet and uh, who 
I'm more educated in the whole cutting weight process. You know, uh, before I didn't really know uh, how to cut weight. I would just kill myself. You know, and now I'm, I feel like uh, uh, everything is going is going better. You know, and that's the scary part. Like I said, I never I never felt this good before uh, before a fight. What's your normal walking around weight um, before a fight, and then what, what do you expect to walk into the octagon on fight time? Yeah. I'm, yeah, I fight at maybe 175. I fight at 175. I, I, I walk around 175, 180. You know, I, the thing is, my body type is that I can easily put on weight and I can easily cut weight. Uh, it, it's like, you know, I can have a bottle, I can have one bottle of water and I put on five pounds, you know. It's like, so the thing is, and also I'm very easy to put on muscle. If I lift weights too much, I can bulk up. I'm a small guy, you know, I'm a very small guy compared to all my opponents, but for some reason, the way my body is made, I get big fast. You know, I, I can easily go up to 185, but obviously, uh, you know, I'm not lean. You know, it's mostly uh, I'm, I'm more I'm more bigger. So, but I, I find that finding the, the diet that I found this time around has been uh, I feel lean, I feel uh, I have more energy, and my goal is to keep this diet all year round. And, and uh, it taught me a lot, you know. And I don't want to play with my weight. I don't want to keep going up and down. It it's, uh, kills me, you know. So uh, my goal is to try to keep my weight, if it's possible, at 170, and so I can cut easily to one and have have the energy to train hard and still cut weight. A lot of uh, pundits have observed, you know, you're fairly short for the lightweight division. Have you considered cutting down to featherweight? Do you think that's something that's even possible? Uh, I mean. I, I I thought about it. Be honest with you, I thought about it. For me, 155 is like I, I already have a hard time cutting to 155. You know, I have to be very strict. I have to have a I have to have a I can't cheat. You know, I gotta be really smart with my diet. And at the end of the day, you know what? I, you know, I, I don't try to. I never duck any opponent that I that I face, regardless of uh, you know how many how much like I, I never dodge no opponent. I, I want to face the best fighters out there to prove to myself and. Uh, I don't really. Uh, I'm not thinking about that right now. Right now, I'm the only thing I'm focusing is on some stuff. So against Andrew Akani, it seemed like you had a little bit of trouble finding the right range against him. He's a really long, lanky guy with a lot of <clears throat> long legs, long arms. What adjustments do you think have you made since that fight? What, what would you do differently against Andrew Akani? What was it about his style that threw you off? Very simple. I, you know, I did, look. I watched for the Jays. I was expecting. You know, I, I, uh, I, I try. I, you know, I know that he was uh, watching his previous fights. I mean, look at the end of the day, was he's a tough fighter. He was. He, he likes to engage. You know, so I was preparing myself mentally for a guy who was going to come in and engage with me and to exchange. And uh, you know, I was like I said at that time, my mind wasn't there because of my last, my, my first loss. So I was doing everything upside down. I was. I was focusing more on power and bodybuilding. I was doing a lot of weights, and uh, and I was thinking too much on one one punch knockouts, you know. And I, I I was just sitting down. I was sitting behind my punches, and I was I wanted to hit him just to look for that one opening. But he played it very smart, you know. He did what he had to do. He stayed out. He stayed far from me. He just, you know, I blocked most. Of, I blocked most of his kicks. I was never hurt. I was never in pain. The whole the, I, I felt the whole time I was chasing him around the cage. I got. I let my emotions get the best out of me, and I and I didn't listen to my corner, and I was just, uh, you know, it, it's what happens, I guess. You know, what are you gonna do? You know, me. Uh, I mean, you know, at the end of the day, you know, uh, sometimes fights don't don't work out to your benefit. But at the end of the day, I'm a professional fighter, and I'm, I I also learned that you always, as a professional fighter, you have to adjust and try to you know to, to adapt to the opponent. And uh, I was flat-footed. I wasn't. I wasn't. I wasn't my usual self. Considering how I trained, you know, I, I did a lot of mistakes in my training camp. But regardless, uh, you know, I, you know, he did what he had to do to win the fight. You know? So Sam Stout's a fighter who likes to come out and c take command of the center of the cage. He's happy with the Donnie Brook. He likes to exchange punches. I'm sure you've watched his fights with Spencer Fisher, where they lots of trading, lots of punches, a, a fair mix of kick scene. Where do you see what kind of range? Do you see yourself fighting on the outside, conceding the center of the ring? And moving, or do you do you think you'll move right in there and go toe to toe with Sam Stout? Yeah, you know we're gonna have to find out both of us. We're gonna see. I I got the, I'm lucky. I got I got the VIP. I got the VIP uh, seat. You know I'm gonna be in the cage. So, you know I I mean I can visualize. Uh, you know obviously mentally in my head I I visualize a lot of scenarios. But at the end of the day it's like you know uh, my goal is just to try to to really just to stay focused and to fight my fight. You know. Uh, I can only think. I can only, the only thing I can tell you is that I want to go. I'm, I'm, my goal is to go out there and just to 
to fight my fight in a sense of throw my kicks, throw my, you know, different types of kicks. This is not, you know, and my goal is to keep moving, hit him in angles, uh, you know, I do mix it up. My goal is to mix it up, to showcase my grappling wrestling. You know, I've been, I've been working very hard on my wrestling grappling and uh, unfortunately I didn't showcase it in my, in my in the MMA. You know, at the end of the day, you know what it is, it's like, it's like Anderson Silva, you know what I mean? It's like, look at him, you know, he, he for him, he loves to strike and, you know, at the end of the day, it's like it's not it's not people they they, they, un- they don't understand that uh, you know when you're fighting, this, just because you're just striking doesn't mean that uh, doesn't mean that you, know, you don't know how to wrestle, how to grapple, or, or so forth. We train all that professional fighter as you know you, you train every you train for everything. Uh, it's just that for me, striking for me is my heart. You know that's how I express my I love to strike. You know I, I love to throw those crazy kicks with people that never see it coming or. I want to. I want to. You know. I want to be a good entertainer. You know. I do fight for myself, but I also. You know. I. I understand it's a, it's a sport, and uh, fans pay f- to watch an exciting fight, and I always try to try to give uh, an exciting fight. You know. So it's it's pretty obvious as an MMA fan that there's a huge adjustment from going from kickboxing to MMA because you have to worry about the takedowns, you have to worry about the grappling, but just talk about the striking part of MMA. What's the biggest difference between? You know the biggest changes you've made to your stance and the range you fight at just for MMA striking, like because of the leg kicks, because of the knees, because of the possibility of takedowns. What's the biggest adjustment you've had to make to your striking game? Oh well, uh, I gotta, you gotta be very elusive. I, I I focus a lot. I well, I try to focus a lot. I try to keep thinking about it. Full work. I find the full work is very fundamental. Full work is everything. You know, full work is uh, gives you the pace of the fight. Uh, also, also learning how to. Uh, I, I, you know, developing the, the, the counters, you know, and timing, timing and countering and full work. I, I believe that, uh, and also the MMA gloves, you know what I mean? You have to adjust to the small gloves. It's not like a boxing glove where you can just put your hands up and block most of the shots. The MMA gloves can, you can sneak the way in, you know? So you got to really be smart how you, how you execute your striking, you know? And that's also, also very important is the speed. I, I worked a lot on speed. I barely lifted weights this time around, you know? I, I worked every. Most of my training was all, everything to do, uh, you know, sports, sports specific, and uh, everything. To, I really worked on my speed and, and my to be explosive. So you train at uh, TriStar Gym under Ferris Zahabi, uh, somebody famous. George St. Pierre, the UFC welterweight championship, also comes out of that camp. Did you see GSP's training camp much for this fight, or did you guys train together at all? Yeah, uh, in the in the beginning we were training a little bit together. Uh, closer to the fight, I mean, I have my guys. He has his guys. You know, we work we work in the same gym. You know, uh, he was work. I guess, you know, obviously he's fighting Carlos Condit, a taller guy. So I guess he he wanted to he wanted to spar. He wanted to train with guys who are taller and mimic his body type. And I was fighting guys who were gonna mimic Sam Stout more or less. It was a little awkward because Chris Hardecki was in the gym most of the time when I was training. But uh, whatever. At the end of the day, you know, it's, a, it's a, nothing personal. It's all business. And Hordecki, of course, trains with Sam Stout under the uh, in the camp, the late Sean Tompkins uh, training camp. So that's where that conflict. Now, GSP is somebody who comes from a Kyoshin karate background, which is a, a cousin, I guess, of the Shotokan karate background. Do you see much karate in GSP striking uh, for MMA, or do you think he's just sort of has it blended yeah. together into an MMA style? You know, my honest opinion, uh, Joseph Pierre, I, he he adapted. You know, uh, he I mean. Like just like my taekwondo background, I did it so many years back. You know, it's like I when I was I was still a kid. You know, just like Kim, he was a kid. I mean, George Saint Pierre. You know, he does what works for him. You know what I mean? He he, he does what works for him, and I do what works for me. That's the beauty about martial arts. You know, every champion don't train the same because it doesn't make sense. His body, I don't think like him. He doesn't think like me. My body isn't like him. You know, so we all have our own different our own different pros and cons. You know, and. Uh, I believe him. Like I mean, George is a great, great athlete. He's very strong, and he's, he's one of the best. Uh, you know, he, he he likes to. You know, his, his game is to take it to the ground and control it. You know, what I mean, that's that's what. You know, what I mean, uh, I I believe he, he loves to. That's what he's bounded in. Is to, to is to you know is great with that. Uh, you know, taking it and moving and and and, and shooting in for the takedown. And you know, uh, he does what he does best. I guess you know that's why he's a champion. So in, in recent years, there's been kind of a wave of fighters that have represented, you know, what we've called traditional martial arts for a long time. And a lot of people thought sports like Taekwondo, Shotokan Karate would never really make a big impact. Even kickboxing, people have been skeptical how useful kickboxing would be in MMA. Obviously, Crow Cop and others, uh, and Maurice Smith made a 
prove the point that those kind of that kickboxing had a lot to add to MMA. What do you think? Uh, you know, we just saw Kung Lee knock out Rich Franklin this Saturday. Do you find yourself rooting for these guys like Kung Lee and Lyoto Machida that are coming, Stephen Thompson, other guys like that that are bringing in uh, more of a kickboxing, karate, taekwondo background into MMA? Yeah, I mean, listen, at the end of the day, that's, you know, I, I love stand-up. Stand-up for me, I, I love, I'm a big fan of boxing, I'm a big fan of Muay Thai. Uh, striking for me is a, it's a beautiful art, you know, because people don't understand, there's a lot to it, you know, and uh, and uh, for me, I, I know those guys are, are of course, they're, they're they're great to watch, you know, Tong Lee uh, is, is a great fighter, you know, and, uh, and uh, you know, it's, uh, it's, like I said, it's a beautiful thing to watch, you know, for me, in my, in my eyes, you know what I mean? So some some guys coming out of a Muay Thai background have said things like Taekwondo doesn't have a good range, that it's fundamentally unsound, that it burns energy too fast. What do you say to guys like that? Do you feel like Taekwondo is a and kickboxing is a, a as solid a striking foundation for MMA as Muay Thai, or or do you feel like you've had to adapt to your game and add more Muay Thai elements? Yeah, hundred percent. Like like look, bottom line is this: that like Bruce Lee once quoted, "No style is the best style," and because my game is to be the, you know, I try to be a great student in a sense. I, I, I never say no to nothing. I always try to learn, you know, I'll try to learn as much as possible I can learn, you know, in, in every aspect. So I find that be, being able to mix everything together, you know, taekwondo, karate, kickboxing, basically at the end of the day, no style is, is the best style. So I, I don't really have a specific style because I train everything. So what, what the thing is, the beautiful thing about it is that, Fighting is another way to express yourself. So every fighter is gonna fight differently because that's that's who they are inside. You know what I mean? So for me, it's like uh, for me, it's like I'm, I'm every day I'm learning. I'm learning who I am and I'm always adapting. You know, like I'll learn a Muay Thai kick, but I, I won't throw it exactly like like a Muay Thai fighter because it's not who. Because that's not me. You know what I mean? Everybody throws a kick different. Everybody throws a jab different. You know, you can teach a guy a jab, but they're all gonna throw it differently. Everybody, you can teach a guy a right hand, but They'll throw differently because they'll adjust it to their to their style, you know. And that's I believe that's that's who I am. I, you know, I'll, I'll 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 practice boxing, I'll practice all the disciplines, but at the end of the day, I'll modify my my style, my likings. So, like to me, somebody who's not who doesn't train, not a not a skilled fighter, the most obvious difference between a, a karate style kick and a Muay Thai style kick is that the Thai guys will use their shin for the point of impact. You guys use your foot. Do you use many kicks that land with your shin? Have you have you incorporated that into your game, or do you pretty much stay out at that longer range and land, try to land with your foot? I mean, no, no, hundred percent. I well, the, the the thing is, it's not really just your foot. It's it's, it's right in between. It's it's your uh, your lower shin and and your and half your your top of your foot. It's not like uh, I mean, at the end of the day. Uh, you have to train your whole body. At the end of the day, you have to train every every piece of muscle, every piece of bone in your body. You have to train that. I kick, uh, you know, I I, I I train with tie pads. I uh, I kick with my my full shins. My shins, uh, you know, what I mean, it's not. I don't just kick with my foot. I, I I kick with any any piece of bone that I have in my body. I'll kick with. So, uh, the guy I'm working with, with my diet, he's, he's making me drink uh, four gallons of water today, and I, I never did that, and it's crazy. I'm all, me and the bathroom are best friends. I bet. <laughs> that is, is that just this week of the fights? Like, is that just yeah, for today? Just, yeah, well, what I did is I started drinking a gallon of water a day, and uh, Monday is four gallons, Tuesday three gallons, and then two, and then Wednesday two, Thursday one gallon. It's a, it's a, it's a, the guy I'm working with, he, obviously, he's a, that's his job. And, uh, you know, at first I'm like, are you sure I should do all this stuff? You know, and he's like, trust me, you know, like, uh, it's all a science, I guess. It, I guess it's another way to trick your body to keep, it, it keeps you hydrated. And at the same time, it makes you sweat. So it's easier for you to cut the weight. But it's a lot of water to drink, you know, it's not easy. Yeah. So you're going into this fight, you know, with two straight losses in the UFC. What are you doing to keep the mental pressure uh, from impacting your fight game? Very simple, Brian Kane. We uh, don't think of it as pressure, look at it as ble- as as a pleasure. So I'm trying to keep, you know, I, I do a lot of soft talk. You know, it's, at the end of the day, look, I'm human. You know, uh, it's impossible. You know, uh, I'm been very fortunate. I had a great amateur kickboxing career. You know, uh, I've been fighting since age of six. You know, I have a lot of mileage in me. You know, and uh, I was I'm very lucky to be able to adapt to different sports. You know, not too many. F- Fighters are able to do that, you know. I, I adjust it to every uh, to every sport that I played in, you know. And uh, I, I don't try to look at the losses. If anything, losses make me stronger, you know. I have nothing to, you know. To, so I'm very, you know, obviously the nerves and everything is always normal. But uh, 
you know, I'm fighting guys who have a lot of experience, and I'm, and that's my goal, right? My goal was to fight guys who have a lot of experience. I'm not, I was never looking for an easy fight, and uh, you know, I'm fighting the top guys in the world, so I mean, I'm nothing to be ashamed of. So Sam Stout's a guy who's won a lot of Fight of the Night awards. Uh, are you going to be looking for a Fight of the Night, or do you think this is a fight where you're looking for the Knockout of the Night award? Well, uh, you know, you've won I, well, yourself. I, yeah. Well, I mean, you know, I never really think of uh, these things because you know, it happens, it happens. Of course, uh, you know, those things uh, come, you know, they, they come, you know. But uh, that's a bonus for me. You know, all, all those things I don't really think of. The only thing I think of is, is uh, you know, training hard and, and focusing on, on what I'm able to control. You know. I can't. I can't think of things that I can't control because that, that's when the stress comes in. Understood. Well, thanks a lot, John. This has uh, been a great interview. Where can fans find you? Are you on Twitter, Facebook? Yeah. Well, I'm very. Yeah. I got. A, you know, I got a fan page on Facebook, John the Bull. Uh, John the Bull McDessy. Twitter is John McDessy MMA. Also, uh, you know, uh, a big, uh, you know, a, a, I'm a part of Freedom Fighter. It's a, it's a great brand. Uh, people, you know, it's, uh, it's been uh, been going very well. You know, and. Uh, and the people can find me at Twitter, on John, like I said, John McDessie in May. And uh, on Facebook, uh, you can go on my fan page and check out all the latest updates and stuff like that. But it, uh, right. I also, sorry, sorry about that. I also have a website, John the Bull McDessie. You can, uh, I think there's uh, updates all the time there. So. All right. Well, thanks a lot, John, and best of luck against Sam Stout. We'll be watching that on Saturday at UFC 154. This is Kid Nate of Bloody Elbow signing off. If you like this sort of thing, remember to subscribe to the YouTube channel, MMANation.com. Thanks very much.